Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. Now, throughout the Bible, we find several covenants or contracts between God and his people. Now, some of these contracts are, are very straightforward in that they are easy to understand. I mean, I'm not saying that they're easy to obey, but straightforward into the to the point where we understand exactly what God is asking us to do and understand the benefits of, of the obedience, right? And we can even see the logical benefit of such a covenant. Now, one example to make the point is the covenant of forgiveness, which says, after committing a sin, if we repent and ask for forgiveness, God is faithful and just to forgive us. But then there are other covenants that are not as easily understood. I mean, we may understand what is expected of us and even the benefits of our obedience, but then we may not fully understand the, the purpose of these covenants. And today, we're going to look at the purpose of tithing. First, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us, Lord. Now in this devotion, we ask that you help us to understand what does it mean to tithe. In Jesus we pray, amen. The pastor of a growing church was facing an interesting dilemma. The church membership was growing, but the church building had only a very limited number of parking spaces available. And fortunately, there was a shopping center across the street with plenty of parking spaces, which conveniently was empty during the church service hours. Now, the pastor of the church reached out to the owner to ask for permission to use the empty parking lot, and he was even ready to pay a rental fee. Now, the, the, the owner of the shopping center drafted a contract to specify the terms of the arrangement. The contract stated that the church could use the parking lot for free. Great. But there was a clause on the contract which states that the church could use the parking lot for every weekend of the year except for Easter weekend. Now, any cars from the church membership parked in the lot during Easter weekend would constitute a breach of the contract and terminate the arrangement. Now, after reading the contract, the pastor asked the owner if he had any activities planned for the shopping center on the Easter weekends. And the owner responded, nope, the lot will be empty. I mean... The pastor was puzzled and, and confused by the restriction. I mean, after all, Easter is always one of the busiest days for the church. So he asked the owner, I mean, what is the purpose of this condition and, and why this specific weekend? The owner said that the lot is yours to use for free as long as you need it, but it does not belong to you. Not being able to use the lot on any random weekend may not drive home the point, but the inconvenience of not being able to use it on Easter weekend will be a strong reminder that the parking lot belongs to someone else. And in studying tithing, we can look at the purpose of this covenant from two points of view, right? Uh, from the aspect of the giver, God wants his people to know that in everything, he must come first. And tithing is important because it helps us establish a relationship of trust with God. And to make one-tenth of your income and give it away truly is an act of faith. Our self-reliance may lead us to believe that there is more value in putting that extra 10% in, in a bank account to save up for a rainy day. But the act of faith of returning our tithe is a reminder that God is our provider and our protector. You see, Matthew 6 verse 19 through 21 states this. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
Tithing is also a reminder that God is the owner of everything on this earth. You see, Psalms 24 verse 1 states, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. You see, tithing helped the children of Israel remember that God was the proprietor of their fields, their flocks, and their herds. And it was he who sent them the sunshine and the rain that developed and ripened the harvest. Everything that they possessed was his. They were but his stewards of his goods. Likewise, whatever wealth we may have acquired, however hard we had to work for them, God is still the owner. He gave us the strength to work the intellect to apply ourselves, and the possibility to earn money. Returning the time keeps us humble in knowing that God is the source of all of our blessings. And in addition to recognizing God as the ultimate owner, God promised that our financial faithfulness gives us access to even more blessings from him. As part of the tithing contract, God has promised blessings that are so large that we won't have room enough to receive them. In other words, to those who prove themselves faithful stewards, he will commit greater trusts. Says the Lord as 1 Samuel 20 verse 30, those that honor me, I will honor. In other words, to those who prove themselves faithful stewards, he will commit greater trusts. Says the Lord as 1 Samuel 2 verse 30, those that honor me, I will honor. Now, I don't want you to interpret the text only as saying as that if you return your tithe, God will give you more money. It says he will bless us beyond measure. This means obedience to his commands will unleash blessings that we may otherwise miss out on if we choose to rely on ourselves instead of him. And these blessings can be in ways that we can't even imagine or in forms that money could never really buy. In other words, when we rob God by not returning our tithes, we also rob ourselves of the blessings that he has in store for us. And from the aspect of the work of the tithe, the payment of the tithe was part of God's plan for the support of his service. I mean, God not only tells us to return the tithe that he that is already his, he also tells us what to do with it. His tithe is to be used for the support of the gospel ministry, and therefore the needs of the ministers are taken care of with God's tithes. Now, you see, in biblical times, the tribe of Levi, the ministerial force in the Old Testament, was not giving large properties like all the other tribes. Levi was supported by the tithes of the others, and they themselves also tithed their income. The tithe is not meant to create a group of ultra-rich, privileged few from among God's people. It is meant to support those who work in the ministry so that they could continue to spread the gospel at home and around the world. Brothers and sisters, I would like to remind you that there will come a time where wealth or money will be completely useless. We will face situations where our money will not be enough to bail us out. Let us practice trust and obedience to God now because he is the only source of help that will never, ever fail. Saints of God, keep the faith.